Good morning to all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We got such a beautiful day for such a beautiful and wonderful celebration. Thank God for it. Feast of Pentecost. Like every other holy day, it's so special because each holy day we have, each holy day we, we keep, we keep it for a special reason. They have meaning and they lead to the next one to come. So on this special day that the Lord has given us, let us pause to examine the authentic, the authentic meaning of this day. There are some who say that God's holy day and all the holy days are done away with. They say that Jesus came, gave his life, and died, and that abolished all the holy days. They're not necessary anymore. We don't have to keep them. Now, is that true? Is it really nailed to the cross with Christ, as they say? I don't believe that. Before we accept that, we have to examine the word of God and make sure that it's true. Just like the Bereans did when Paul delivered truth. They checked it out. They made sure that it was correct. Our Lord came into this world as a human being. He found many practices which he denounced. They were not right. And he told everyone quite clearly and plainly, this is right, that is wrong. He never, he never hedged. And there were some which he condoned. He condoned and he commended because they were right. They were what God gave to us through the prophets over the years. And they are to be kept and, 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 and uh, treated very, very carefully with respect and with thankfulness because they all bring us so much, so much goodness. He never implied or commanded at any time that we should stop keeping the holy days. The holy days he kept, his disciples kept, the apostles kept, and he encouraged us to go on doing so. And he commanded his disciples, whom he left here after he returned to his father, he commanded them all to continue doing this until he comes again. When he comes again, he will tell us what he desires, what he wants, what he commands at that time. But now we are to keep the holy days and to follow all the directives that were given to us down through the years. Uh, through the years. The Lord was always clear about whatever he had to say. He never uh, he never um, said one thing and, and mean something else, and he never neglected to say anything that he, he knew was necessary for us to know. He always said it in a way that everyone can understand, except when he dealt with those who rejected him, those who just didn't want to accept or didn't believe. Then he spoke in parables and he used these parables to make people think, to make people uh, see the points that he was making. They may not see it at the time, but later on they would think, they would process it in their heads and come up with the answers and they'll say, aha, uh -huh, that's what he meant. That's what he meant. And as a result, they grew from these, these truths and these good things that Jesus passed on to us. 
And everything he gave us was for our good. And even when we are bad, he is always good. God is good all the time. And then let us remember that everything that he gave us came directly from the Father. And he said, he told us, he told us, he told us quite plainly. He said in John 8, 28, you don't have to turn there. He said, I do nothing on my own authority, but speak as the Father taught me. Then again in John the 12th chapter and verse 49, he said, this is not my own teaching. My Father commanded me what I will speak. So those parables he gave may have saved many from being lost. They were the truth, and the truth is the word of God. Among his instructions was the keeping of the annual holy days. He kept them, his apostles kept them, his disciples kept them after his death. They are authentic. Why? Because they come from God. They come from God, that makes them true and real and necessary. The necessary, because they keep, us, they keep us informed, they keep us in practice. Informed and in practice. Every time we do it, even if we may have forgotten something from the last time, the next time we do it, it reminds us, it keeps us informed. It keeps us in practice. It's a very important part of a Christian's life. Because they are the very things that we are being trained for, for the future. <coughs> How could it not be important? Why would we not practice it now? As we often say, they groom us, they prepare us, they make us ready. They remind us so we don't forget at any time our purpose in this life. We need to remember that to make sure we're doing the right thing at all times. They prepare us for the future time we will spend with our God and with His Son, our Lord, the Messiah. The Apostle Paul was on one of his journeys teaching the people. You know, he did this a lot. Paul always said, I don't want to, to build on another man's foundation. So he made and created these foundations in so many different places. He traveled. He met many people. He taught many people. On one of these journeys, he was te that uh, he, he took the, to, to, to teach the people and to, to um, uh, show them the things that we need and the things that we should do. Paul, for some reason, was hurrying to get to, Je to Jerusalem on a particular day. He was hurrying. He wanted to get to Jerusalem on that day because there was a special event which was taking place. He wanted to be there for that. All Israel celebrated that event. And that event was the celebration of the Feast of Weeks. All Israel did it was commanded by the God of the Old Testament, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. In addition, this day had taken on an even greater meaning for the church of God, this new church that Jesus had formed. Because after the death of Christ, something was added to it, something so special. The Spirit, God's Holy Spirit was added to it, and it became God's holy day of Pentecost. So they say Christ abolished it when he gave his life. So why was Paul rushing 
to get to Jerusalem to celebrate that day if it was done away with. In Acts the 20th chapter, as Paul's ship was leaving, Italy, the word says in Acts 20, 15 and 16, Acts 20, 15 and 16, it says, sailing from there, the next day we arrived in Chios. The following day we crossed over to Samos, and the day after we came to Miletus. They were moving, they wanted to get somewhere. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus to avoid spending time in the province of Asia. Why? Why was he doing this? Because he was hurrying to be in Jerusalem, if possible, for the day of Pentecost. This is something, brethren, after the death of Christ that the church was keeping. And this is the new church. This is where the, when the church began. If the church at the beginning was doing it, and at no time after, they said the death of Christ, but okay, this is after the death of Christ. At no time after did we ever get any command to stop keeping these days. Why would that be? Why would it be that we would think that? It doesn't even make sense. Then in this other account of his travels, Paul was being transported to Italy after his appeal to be heard by Caesar. You remember he was having a hard time and he thought that to go to Caesar would give him a better chance. He appealed to go to Caesar. His ship encountered bad weather and rough seas. And in this account, Paul mentions the Day of Atonement. Let's look at Acts 27, 8 through 10. With still more difficulty, we sailed along the coast and came to a place called Fair Havens, near the city of Lycia. Again, he's on the ship and he's having a hard time. By now, much time had passed and the voyage was already dangerous. Since the Day of Atonement was already over, and Paul gave his advice and told them, men, I can see that this voyage is headed toward disaster and heavy loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. Why is the Day of Atonement mentioned at this time in God's Holy Scriptures if it was not something that the, that the, the church kept? This is something the church kept. It's mentioned because the incident happened on the Day of Atonement. This is when they were going through this hard time. And Paul and others on the ship kept this day. Why else would it be mentioned? It was not abolished, brother. It was always real and true. And we are to go on keeping it, believing it, until our God tells us we don't have to do it anymore. Then, then we will, we will stop. And then why would one of the hardest workers of the way of God, I'm talking about Paul, why would he pay such attention to the Feast of Pentecost or the Day of Atonement which comes later in the year, if they were not genuine holy days. They were genuine, and that's why he mentioned them, that's why he mentioned them, and that's why he, he, he kept them, and kept them very specially holy. We know that the day of Pentecost was the day on which the church first received God's Holy Spirit, so special, so special. We thank our God for that blessing. We know that every believer receives that blessing. It strengthens us, it takes us through many difficult times. We know that the Day of Atonement 
is the day that we afflict our souls and humbly present ourselves before God with a controllable and a willing mind. Let's make the holy appointed days of God the highlights of a year, appreciating each as they come, remembering the meaning that we keep them. We love a God. We love a God. We respect a God. And we want to be obedient to a God and do everything that he tells us. And the Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That includes the commands to keep the holy days of God. Always looking forward to the next approaching holy day. Let's bear it in mind. Looking forward to the next day. As we savor and appreciate the meaning of each of these special days. Which our God has prepared and given us as an inheritance. At this time of great trouble in this broken world. Amen. Amen.